Schools have cut back on those classes and private lessons are pricey. But in Pleasant City, one community center has found a way. They couldn't get to everyone, but fortunately, those who didn't get in on this day won't have to do without. And it's not going to be easy for residents. This is the new normal, and they've just got to get used to it. Yoga is believed to have a calming effect on adults who practice it, and it apparently works on babies, too. Election day in the Florida presidential primaries, and emotions are running high. Trump does not stir up. The people that stir up are the far left. Well, if Mr. Trump gets elected, I will be moving back to Australia. Some talk politics on street corners. Do I agree uh, with most of it? No. While others quietly cast their ballots, keeping their votes to themselves. Do you want to say who you voted for and why? No. Since Florida is a closed primary state, only registered Democrats and Republicans can vote for a presidential candidate. Voters who registered with no party affiliation were given ballots with just municipal races on them. You think they will vote you for me? But regardless of who was on the ballot, getting out the vote was still a challenge. This trolley gave free rides to the polling place in the old Northwood neighborhood. Let you out right here. Right. In Palm Beach County, absentee and early voting lightened the load on Election Day, and as closing time at the polls drew near, voters lined up for victory parties. Donald Trump's at his private Mar-a-Lago club in Palm Beach, Hillary Clinton's at the convention center in West Palm Beach. Are you from Canada? Yes. A lot of people say if Trump wins, they're going to Canada. Well, we have some spare rooms, so if anybody wants to, just get in touch. With only a handful of protesters outside and no reports of major disruptions or violence, many voters say no matter who they voted for, they're just glad they did it here. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB-TV. It's the morning after lead zookeeper Stacy Conweiser was killed by one of the tigers that were her responsibility and her joy. The zoo is closed to the public, the usually packed parking lot nearly empty, as fellow keepers, including Conweiser's husband Jeremy, slip inside to comfort one another. Meantime, at the Science Center right next door, where a kids' engineering contest is underway, it's a whole different world. Countdown! Many of those who came to this event also frequent the zoo, have seen Conweiser's popular tiger talks, and were understandably shocked to hear about her death. I think it's pretty tragic that like, the zookeeper has been doing it for a while and just suddenly gets attacked. The zoo is not releasing many details, but a spokeswoman says the 38-year-old Conweiser was preparing the backstage area for the night following the usual safety protocols when the tiger attacked her. The animal was sedated, not put down, and is still at the zoo as the investigation continues. Some safety experts have criticized the routine here, and many of those who frequent the zoo have questions too. Because I thought she was like behind the gate. It should be more like precautions to like the zoo workers, like, so like stuff like this doesn't happen. Conweiser wasn't planning to work at the Palm Beach Zoo for much longer. She had just accepted a new job with the FDA, hoping to eventually work for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service. Instead, her family is now planning her funeral. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB-TV. During a solemn ceremony in front of West Palm Beach City Hall, they raised the rainbow flag, but only to half staff, in memory of those who were murdered at an Orlando gay nightclub. This will be the first time that we don't raise that flag the entire way to the top. And that from now on, every single time we celebrate Pride in June, we're also going to have to have a memorial for all the people we lost in Orlando. 49 people dead, 53 others wounded, some with ties to Palm Beach County, and the reality of the worst mass shooting in American history, just two and a half hours away, is still hard to comprehend. Gracious God, our hearts are heavy today, Lord. Uh, with the tragedy that took place in Orlando, not far from here. And while the country mourns, steps are being taken to help those who were shot but survived. Blood drives like this one, sponsored by the police department, hastily organized to replenish supplies at Orlando hospitals, where victims, some in critical condition, are still being treated. Donors from all walks of life, 
business people on their lunch hour, police officers, and those who felt a special affinity for the victims, like UCF graduate Erica Nolan with gay friends in Orlando, who now admits to feeling hatred, honestly. Meantime, authorities are trying to find out more about 29-year-old gunman Omar Martin, who lived in Fort Pierce, pledged allegiance to the Islamic State, and was killed by police during a standoff at the nightclub. And while the investigation continues, there have been calls for legislation to outlaw the type of assault weapons used in this and many other mass shootings. Since Sandy Hook, there's been close to a thousand mass shootings that have taken place in our country. It's about time we did something about sensible gun control. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for WPB TV. A long line at the drive through and business was brisk, but they weren't buying burgers here. They were trading in their guns. All you gotta do is pull around right around to the what? RV and they'll go ahead and take care of you. The gun buyback intended to take weapons off the street with the offer of gift cards worth up to 100 bucks in exchange for anything from rifles that still work. When you hear that click, that means it's working. To handguns that don't, with West Palm Beach police standing by to conduct the transactions, no questions asked. Many of those turning in their weapons say they did so because they wanted to get the guns out of the house, away from their kids and grandkids. I also have seven grandchildren that I'm concerned that are around my house on a daily basis, find these things and they want, they'll wind out, they'll wind up someplace where they shouldn't be. Some say they've been thinking about dumping the guns for quite a while and this seemed like an easy way to do it. Of course, the gift cards help too. I'm getting a gift certificate to Whole Foods, so I think it might be lobster tonight. <laughs> the weapons will be screened for possible connections to crimes with those that are deemed clean destroyed. And while one day of trade-ins won't come close to ridding the city of all illegal weapons, many people say there is comfort in knowing that at least now some of them are out of circulation. The handguns are only used for one thing, so... I was happy to be able to do it. I was thankful to be able to do it. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for TV18. Victims of domestic violence often feel helpless with nowhere to turn. They may be afraid for themselves and their children. That's why one local women's organization is saying enough is enough. They're the Jamaicans of the Palm Beaches, former islanders and their friends who participate in service projects in the community. But some are also victims of domestic violence or no women who are, and that's what prompted them to start this annual event five years ago. When that family white in um, Rivera Beach was killed five years ago, the husband shot the wife and five of the children, one survived. That got to us, plus it's somebody I knew as well. Since that time, the violence has not stopped and it continues to be all too close to home. The latest tragedy, the murder of the daughter and sister of two members of the group. Just days after the body of 26-year-old Princess Tiffany Hosang was found, her relatives bravely attended the rally. Every year we continue to see this happening. And while police have not confirmed that her death was the result of domestic violence, some of those close to her suspect it. They are, of course, devastated and terrified. Very scary, very frightening. And we just figured that we, there's more we need to do. Many who've survived abuse at the hands of a loved one say they may never feel completely safe, but they do feel they have a better chance at life now that they've left their abusers and have this advice for those who may be too afraid to break free. Get out, get to safe space, don't contact, stay away, don't go back. If they say, I'm sorry, it'll never happen again, don't believe them. This is Cheryl Kahn reporting for TV18.